Borderlands 3 has found itself embroiled in yet another controversy, and yet again, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford lies at its heart. The accusation started with Gearbox coming off looking like a cheap bastard, but the accusations and the mudslinging have gone back and forth to the point where Randy Pitchford has now been accused of physical assault. So David Eddings, a former Gearbox employee, confirmed that he would not be returning to voice Claptrap. He has, uh, seemingly as a favour to Gearbox, had been voicing Claptrap in addition to his main job since the original Borderlands, but he will not be voicing the mono-wheeled robot in Borderlands 3. His reason being, Gearbox wouldn't pay him for it. Apparently it's fairly common in Gearbox that uh, salaried employees will provide voice lines for characters and not get additional payment for it. Eddings left the company in 2017, so did not figure on playing Claptrap claptrap for free and at that point gearbox didn't have him back when asked if he would voice claptrap eddings said no for the first time i insisted on getting paid for my performance and all of a sudden they couldn't afford me now i'm not telling them how to run their business but maybe next time they should put the 12 million dollar payment from 2k in the gearbox bank account instead just saying. That last line references an alleged $12 million bonus that Randy Pitchford secured for himself and that didn't go to the studio. Gearbox has only ever denied that allegation. Well, Medieval Times patron and pornography storage expert Randy Pitchford fired back because of course he would. He went straight at the employee himself, calling him bitter and disgruntled about having been terminated. When asked about having an employee perform additional duties without additional pay, he said, there was no force, he wanted it, and reveled in it. The issue today is that Mr. Reddings is bitter and disgruntled about having been terminated. He was offered two times scale, he refused. I don't want him to do it unless he wants to do it, as motivation affects performance. There was no force, he wanted it and reveled. Who talks like that about a voice acting gig? Who talks like that about anything? He can make anything seem creepy. Gearbox would then do what it should have been able to do before its CEO started mouthing off and released an official statement. They clarified that additional voice work is something employees can do, but it's not a mandatory requirement. They said that because Eddings was no longer an employee, they offered him a standard voice acting rate, but couldn't reach an agreement. Somewhat unsurprisingly, David Eddings did not appreciate being called bitter and disgruntled in public by a CEO. And this is where the allegations get really nasty. David Eddings posted a Twitter thread, and I will read it out for you in case you haven't seen it. He said, I was fine moving on after Gearbox, but when my former boss starts mouthing off about various aspects of my employment, including how highly compensated I was and how generous he is, I feel obligated to correct the record. I had a lot of mixed feelings when asked to reprise the role of Claptrap late last year and eventually realised I was willing to put differences aside and do something cool for Borderlands fans with my friends at Gearbox. I ultimately offered to do it for free in exchange for past royalties owed, plus an apology for something I've never spoken about publicly until now, Randy physically assaulted me in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis at GDC 2017. Personally, I think Randy's been on tilt the last few years. He's not the victim he portrays himself to be. I can agree with that. I even blocked him a couple of years ago for stalking me on social media. Enough is enough. It's nice not feeling the need to spot any sleight of hand these days or wonder if the card was chosen or forced. I'm happy to be free from the half-truths and full-on deceptions, and thankful to no longer hear people referred to as muggles, like a con man refers to a mark. As an aside, seems a bit conspicuous that he chimed in on my salary but didn't mention anything about the $12 million of revenue he siphoned away from the employee royalty pool. FYI, Gearbox employees are asked to take lower salaries with the promise of royalty shares. 2K says they won't give a statement regarding an ongoing lawsuit, but if the allegation is false, then it sure seems a lot easier to just deny it, since that's the only reason they're mentioned, the whole thing stinks. At the time of talking, Randy Pitchford does not appear to have addressed the allegations of physical assault. Now, personally, I can't speak to that. Everyone who watches this channel, almost everyone who watches this channel knows I've got personal history with Randy Pitchford. He has at multiple times attempted to mischaracterize me as a liar with a vendetta, which is some really fun turnaround from him because my problem with him is the fact that he lies. I maintain that he lied to my face about Aliens Colonial Marines at the exact same time he was lying to everyone else in the world about 
aliens, colonial marines. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think he lied to everyone who ever interviewed him about colonial marines. I don't think he specifically lied to me, but I can certainly sympathise with David Eddings' uh, needs to speak out on Twitter because I've been in the crosshairs of Randy when he's going on a character assassination binge. From my personal dealings with him and from seeing his dealings with other people, I've surmised that Randy Pitchford is a man who struggles greatly with the concept of an apology. He is a vindictive, petty, grudge-bearing man. He's an accomplished liar, and whenever he gets caught out, he instantly attempts to position himself as the victim. Get caught lying about aliens, colonial marines, he's a victim of an evil media. He misunderstands what microtransactions are and claims they won't be in his game when they will be in his game, and he portrays the resulting news stories as outlets like Game Informer trying to fuck him. Just, it's right, it just feels, it feels... Um, unfair. For someone so eager to put themselves over as the face of the company, as the face of the company's games, as the face of the brand, this so-called CEO doesn't seem to like accountability very much. This situation is the latest in a line of controversies surrounding Gearbox that Randy Pitchford has either been at the centre of or made worse. In this case, it's probably both since the original allegation is nowhere near as bad as the latest allegation and the reason Edding said he spoke up about that more serious allegation is because Randy Pitchford started opening his fucking jaw and going on about it. And it almost always is Randy Pitchford at the heart of these things. Certainly any controversy I can think about regarding Gearbox over the past several years has him involved in some significant way. Now I'm not saying he's a liability to Gearbox, but... Uh, yeah... He looks like a liability to give. He's a he's a liability. Most CEOs know when to keep their head down. Even Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, whose firing I've called for in the past, generally keeps himself out of the public eye and knows when to keep his mouth shut when his company's I involved in some sort of controversy. Although most of the time, Gearbox as an entity isn't the one involved. Most of this shit comes down to Randy Pitchford as an individual. You know, I've had a lot of industry chats with people over the years and whenever I've chatted about Gearbox I've never to my knowledge to my recollection heard a bad thing said about anyone who works at Gearbox other than Randy Pitchford and apparently the man is an arse head to work for. And as such a living catalyst for bullshit and problems, Randy Pitchford really needs to stop playing the victim card because it ain't working. His song and dance routine is so old at this point. In fact, I'm expecting him at some point to blame games media for this, to talk about how the game's journalists are doing him dirty and portraying him wrong yet again. Whatever he does, if he behaves as he's behaved in the past, he will just once again categorise this, all of this, as a lie, as an attempt to discredit him, which again will be projection because that is part of his whole song and dance routine. Right now we don't really know any details further about the physical assault allegations and it will be interesting to see if Randy Pitchford addresses those or not. In any case, this has become a nasty situation and fuck knows how it's going to escalate from here, but all I know for sure is that Randy is a duplicitous self-martyr. And the well-earned reputation he has for being one is going to make it pretty hard to defend himself in the court of public opinion, certainly. But whatever happens, it doesn't look like this controversy is going to wrap up succinctly and pleasantly. And it doesn't look like Randy Pitchford is ever going to stop being a publicity nightmare for Gearbox. So there we go, another Randy controversy to throw on the big pile.